It's 6.13. All 10 regions of the country welcome to over 6.30. Prime News on My Media Prime. Thanks for joining us for the Tuesday edition of the News on My Media Prime live from Studio A at Fengudrom Bange in Douala, the economic capital of the country. My name is Genda. Heldrin Blanche King. Two car thieves have been apprehended by the intervention a group of special police unit, Jemi. They were presented to the press today with the call for vigilance in the society. Dolingonde was present during the presentation of the thieves earlier today. Her report. Despite the heavy militarization of every nook and cranny in Cameroon, Crime wave still seems to be on the rise, especially in the nation's economic capital, Douala. Car theft is the new trend in the pilfering business. In less than one week, following the interception of these interurban car bandits, today another set has been presented by the mobile intervention group here in Douala for the same crime. Emwe René Mekis, aged 35, is the gang leader, together with Kemnang Jean Joseph, aged 38, is his partner in crime. Thanks to the rapid intervention of the mobile intervention group unit here in Douala, these two men were caught in possession of these cars. Upon talking with the gangsters, the leader, René Mekis, denies all allegations, claiming his innocence. Meanwhile, Jean-Joseph, his accomplice, says he was misled and was only found at the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing before being intercepted by the forces of law and order. J'attendais que son ami vienne me remettre l'argent. Je vois son ami arrive, je suis en train de causer avec lui directement au mari. Despite all interrogations, his last word remains his own task was to go reclaim an undisclosed amount of money from an agent after being dispatched by Renee McKees, the gang leader. On her part, this lady, who happens to be one of the owners to the reclaimed cars, recounts that her car was stolen earlier this year after parking it at the lot in her job site. After channeling the matter to the forces of law and order, today her car has been reclaimed. She further disclosed that, though her car documents and other motor parts have not yet been found, she however remains thankful to the forces of law and order for coming to her aid, given she had lost all hopes of seeing her car again. While addressing the media, Commissioner Richard, together with his colleague Roger Miferi, have collaboratively called on the general public to be ever more cautious and vigilant as these guys, they say, are swifter than the wind, but not the police. Thanks, Dolly Gondi. In similar news, two bandits specialized in breaking into phone shops and stealing phones were caught recently or yesterday by the population of Tiko in the south west region of the country. They were severely beaten before the intervention of forces of law and order. Von Quinta has details in the following report. Inhabitants of Tiko, southwest region of Cameroon can now heave a sigh of relief after they laid hands on two young men specialized in breaking into homes and stealing phones. The night breaking March 1, 2021, was a long one for the population of Tiko as they decided to put an end to our activities of men of the underworld in their community. Then is NC, the two men began their operation at about 2 a.m. At about 2 a.m., my wife and I realized there was someone in the house. Out of curiosity, my wife asked who the person was and he responded, asked again, the thief jumped out of the house and his key. Oh, I see height. We went after him but didn't succeed in catching him. Same night, he entered another person's house and this time, we successfully laid our hands on him. This lady, whose phone and that of her daughter was stolen, narrates how the thief got into her residence. My three kids and I were asleep, and suddenly I heard my kids screaming, Thief. There is a thief in the house. Before I got to their room, 
he had a scheme. When I asked what transpired, my daughter said her phone had been stolen. I equally checked and realized my two phones I left in the parlor had been stolen. We alerted neighbors. We alerted neighbors and he attempted escaping, leaving behind a cup glass, sleepers and a cab. Caught after two successful operations in one night, the population exercised mob justice on the men who were rescued by police officers, though they could not be detained due to the wounds they sustained. After yesterday's joint press conference involving state ministers, it is now clear the country is battling with the second phase of the COVID-19 pandemic. Minister of Health, Madame Uda Malachi, has cautioned, uh, cautioned uh, Cameroonians to be extremely uh, careful, taking into consideration all anti-COVID-19 uh, measures. Let's listen to Gladys Bomotongina in the French language. Malgré la remontée de cas de COVID-19 et à l'heure où l'on parle de possibilité de seconde vague du virus, le ministre de la Santé, Manaouda Malachi, lors de la tenue d'une réunion hier avec certains laborantins, a réitéré à la population la position statique du gouvernement au sujet du confinement. Le président de la République a été clair dès le premier jour. Il ne confine pas ses, co ses compatriotes. Donc il y a quelques mesures qui ont été prises pour mieux permettre euh, une prise en charge des, euh, des cas, pour mieux permettre euh, euh, l'évolution euh, des euh, personnels de santé sur le terrain, pour mieux permettre la maîtrise, n'est-ce pas, de, de, de l'épidémie. Mais le Cameroun n'a jamais été confiné. Et donc, dans notre langage, nous ne sommes pas en train de parler de confinement. Nous sommes en train de parler de renforcer l'efficacité des mesures que nous avons sur le terrain en termes de, du tracking, du testing et puis du traitement que nous avons mis en place. C'est la stratégie que le Cameroun a adoptée. De même, il a tenu à refaire l'emphase sur le COVAX, un sujet créant la polémique depuis quelque temps dans le pays. En précisant de prime abord qu'il est vrai qu'une procédure est en train d'être prise pour une possibilité de réception de 1 700 000 doses de vaccins, mais que l'on n'en est pas encore à la commande, mais plutôt à la facilitation. La question nous intéresse au plus haut point et nous avons déjà reçu de très hautes instructions de M. le Président de la République sur la question de vaccination. La première chose qui a été claire, c'est que euh, nous observons la situation épidémiologique et au cas où la situation épidémiologique devrait n'est-ce pas, nous conduit. Il faut que nous ayons ces vaccins, cette, euh, ces vaccins prêts. Et donc, nous devons faire une action de préparation de manière à disponibiliser le vaccin au cas où la situation le permet qu'on ne puisse pas être pris de court. Par la suite, il a tenu à rappeler que le vaccin, s'il est commandé, ne sera utilisé que si la situation épidémiologique du pays s'empire et qu'en même temps, il n'est pas obligatoire, mais facultatif. Nous pensons que bientôt, nous aurons les vaccins disponibles au Cameroun, déjà par la facilité COVAX. Et à partir de là, nous ferons jouer d'abord le caractère non obligatoire du vaccin. Parce qu'il faut que le Cameroun soit vacciné. Celui qui ne voudra pas se faire vacciner ne va pas être vacciné. Néanmoins, le respect des mesures barrières et l'approfondissement de celles-ci reste la méthode par excellence prônée par le gouvernement dans le cadre de la lutte contre cette pandémie. Cameroon is facing a resurgence of COVID-19 contamination throughout the country between December 23, 2020 and February 25, 2021. The country has recorded 9,976 new positive cases was in two months. 105 people have died from COVID-19. According to official statistics, Cameroon has moved from an average of 46 deaths per month in 2020 to more than 52 that per month in 2021 during yesterday's joint press conference with the ministers the ministers decried a laxity exhibited by most Cameroonians across the national territory let's now listen to minister of communication rene emmanuel sadi in the following excerpt ladies and gentlemen i thought it appropriate to invite you to this joint press conference at a time when the COVID-19 pandemic continues to wreak havoc 
throughout the world and remains at the center of all concerns in Europe, Asia, the United States of America, Latin America, and even through Africa. Throughout the world, and in view of the current outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, we have for several months now been witnessing a general mobilization, especially that of governments and the scientific communities, to find ways and means of curbing the spread of COVID-19. In this respect, research has been stepped up with a view to making available the vaccines that many countries use today, with a few glimmers of hope here and there, despite the polemics surrounding the use of vaccines in this bitter flight fight against COVID-19. In addition, there has been growing concern about the emergence of several variants of the COVID-19 virus, which of course has heightened the anxiety of the international community. Africa has also been affected by this pandemic and has not been spared. Minister Rene Manuel Sadi equally mentioned that the fight against COVID-19 in the country remains a challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as Cameroon is concerned, as you know, the fight against COVID-19 constitutes a major challenge for the government of the Republic, all the more so as there has been a rise in COVID-19 cases in our country in recent months. This resurgence of the pandemic is marked by an increasingly far-reaching spread of the coronavirus, mainly due to the increase in the number of Cameroonians infected on a daily basis, as well as a considerable rise in the number of deaths recorded in our country. As a matter of fact, as of 25 February 2021, Cameroon officially has recorded 35,714 confirmed cases of COVID-19. 32,594 recovered, 551 deaths, 2,672 active cases, including 228 under treatment in the care units, and 53 compatriots under breathing assistance. The analysis of this Following an order from the mayor of Douala One Council to uh, shut down all nursery schools in the municipality for an undetermined period uh, to limit the spread of COVID-19, most or all academic institutions strictly respected this order. My major prime team visited some schools and confirmed the doors were indeed shut. Meantime, the regional delegate for education has ordered that all the nursery schools be reopened with immediate effect, stating that a COVID-19 test will be conducted on all pupils and teachers and those tested positive shall be isolated. This is contained in a communique signed today, March 2, 2021. We we'll move on to something else on our health page today. We'll talk about multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis kills about 50,000 persons yearly, according to statistics and research carried out by health experts, with sufferers being prone to suicide by a 7.5 rate of all global suicide cases. This life-threatening health condition is overlooked by many in our societies. Bokengo Kemia Worthy talks about the consequences and and symptoms of 
This is in the following report. Multiple sclerosis is a disabling disease of the brain and spinal cord or the central nervous system. This health condition causes a wide range of potential lifelong threatening damages from attacking the protective shield of the brain, covering the nerves fibers to communication problems to the rest of the body. Across the globe, the estimated number of persons with multiple sclerosis increased to 2.8 million in 2020. Though the disease is said to be the most widespread disabling neurological condition of young adults around the world, it is very present in all races and is not a respecter of age. It should be noted that symptoms of the disease such as vision loss, pain, fatigue, impaired coordination amongst others vary from person to person as others may have severe chronic symptoms while some people may be symptom free. Having an unknown cause or trigger regarding the disease, everyone is advised to make regular hospital checkup a major health priority so as to stay safe from this lifelong threatening disabling disease. Let's now get top African stories with Nora Kakebi. The governor of Zamfara State in Nigeria announced today, March 2, that all 279 girls kidnapped in a boarding school in Nigeria have been released. Authorities initially said 317 girls were abducted in the raid by hundreds of gunmen in the remote Jangabe village on Friday. But the governor confirmed today the total number of girls abducted was 279. The governor added that the students were being taken to a health facility for proper medical examination. Government officials had been in talks with kidnappers following Nigeria's third school attack in less than three months. According to Zamfara State Police Commissioner Abutu Yaro, the government-led peace process had resulted in the girls' release. Still in Nigeria, reports said jihadists linked to the Islamic State have attacked a UN base and overrun a humanitarian hub in the northeastern part of the country, trapping 25 aid workers in the process. Military sources said scores of jihadist fighters invaded the town of Dikwa in restive Borno state, dislodging troops from their military base and touching the humanitarian hub. But so far, no one has been affected and no casualties recorded. The military source added that reinforcements, including fighter jets and helicopters, had been deployed to help repel the attackers. Residents in Dikwa have fled the area following the attack. And in Ghana... President Nana Akufo Addo recently became the world's first recipient of a coronavirus vaccine from COVAX. He said it is important that he sets the example that the vaccine is safe by being the first to have it so that everybody in Ghana can feel comfortable about taking the vaccine. Ghana's First Lady Rebecca Akufo Addo equally received a shot before the rest of the 600,000 doses were deployed across the country. It should be recalled that last Wednesday, Ghana was the first country to receive vaccines from COVAX. Despite the vaccine rollout, the president said all the current restrictions to curb the spread of the virus were to remain in place. We now join a topic content for a review of matches played yesterday in the ongoing under-20 African Nations Cup in Mauritania. He reports in the French language. Le Ghana renverse la Gambie et se qualifie pour la finale. Un but à zéro, c'est le résultat de la première demi-finale qui s'est jouée hier lundi 1er mars 2020 en journée au stade olympique de Noachot en Mauritanie dans le cadre de la Cannes des moins de 20 ans qui est organisée. L'attaquant ghanéen Père Suisse Bois ouvre le score à la 34e minute sur un magnifique coup franc. La Gambie qui a battu le Ghana en phase de groupe a tout essayé pour revenir au score avec des assauts répétés. En revanche, la défense des Black Satellites a tenu bon jusqu'au dernier sifflet du match. Le Ghana passe donc en finale et affrontera samedi prochain à 21h GMT l'Ouganda qui a sévèrement fouetté la Tunisie sur un score de 4 buts à 1. Lors de la deuxième demi-finale de la Cannes U20, disputé hier soir. Dès la quatrième minute, l'attaquant ougandais Bassongwa marque le premier but. Il sera copié par son compère d'attaque Kakouza qui va inscrire le deuxième but à la 36e minute. Les Tunisiens 
ne resteront pas indifférents. Ils vont réagir par l'intermédiaire du défenseur Ben Laman qui va réduire le score à 2 buts à 1. Du retour des vestiaires, 5 minutes après, Kakuza se démarque encore et introduit son deuxième but. C'est à la 73e minute que le même attaquant commet un triplet. Les Ougandais vont finalement s'imposer 4 buts à 1 et rejoindre le Ghana en finale. And that's it for today's edition of Prime News on my major prime. Thanks for being with us. See you tomorrow at 6.30. God willing for another edition of Prime News on my major prime. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. Faith Tata Bernu coordinated the news produced by Ewane Eli Nolinga. Stay tuned to my major prime at 7 p.m. You have Kum Lunat with his crack team of analysts. Enjoy the fresh edition of Prime Art today. Happy viewing. Good night.